Okay, thanks for stopping by guys, and uh, what we're looking at today is a new antenna I just picked up. Um, it is the Mosley Mini 32A, so it's a mini tri-band uh, two-element Yagi. Uh, so at the moment, and I'm, I'm hoping the, uh, the wind doesn't cause us too many issues, it's a little bit breezy out here. Um, and if it does get too windy, we'll have to, uh, have to do a voiceover. Just taking a drive, a couple of hours to go and pick this up picked up for about 350 uh, that's Australia as well uh, they, they go off around about the $700 mark uh, but the good news is the fellow that bought this one that I picked it up of um, has basically opened the box uh, but never actually done anything with it it never went up so you basically brand new uh, so you can see there's the install kit here looks interesting um, all the elements etc are in there now keeping in mind the one thing that is missing out of this uh, is the instructions so uh, realistically how hard can it be those might be famous last words though. so the reason we're getting this is the bands seem to be improving a little bit uh, certainly the upper bands 10 and 15 and 6 were having some good activity the other night uh, so I jumped on board and uh, made some contacts and regretted getting rid of the hex beam so I wanted a mini beam. Um, at the moment, what you'll see there is the uh, dual bander, uh, sorry, tri bander, it does six as well. Uh, we've got an end fed that runs straight across the top uh, into that tree over in the corner there. Uh, and we've also got a loop, which I think you can just see that wire to that tree, uh, over to the feed point there of the end fed, back along here up to that tree and across. Uh, what I've actually found is that um, the the loop has actually been fairly directional in that it seems to be uh, out of line with the half wave that I've got up there. Uh, so I can switch between the two and it does improve the signals. Um, so a little bit of directivity there, but once I actually get this off, sorry, once I actually get this up, one of those will come down. Uh, and I'm not sure which at this point. I think I will keep up the loop. Uh, and probably drop down the end fed uh, because the the tuner that I've got going into the 7300 is an LDG and there's two inputs and I'm not going to mess around with uh, with antenna switches and stuff like that so we'll have those two up and while we're in the process of putting this up which is just going to go on the 30 foot mast over there which is going to come away from the tree a little bit uh, probably closer to the rear of the house there in the middle uh, we'll put that up so it gives me free space to rotate the antenna. I would like to just chop a little bit out and probably leave that there. Uh, but we'll move it across a little bit. Uh, the G450 Yesu rotators are going to go up the top. Obviously everything on top of that. I'm going to put the tri-bander at the bottom. Um, just straight on top of the rotator. A uh, little bit of space uh, up and then we're going to have a 2 and 70 Yagi. Uh, we'll have it horizontal for SSB work. Uh, and then we'll have the uh, tri-bander on top of that. That's the plan anyway. We'll film it as we go. If I have any particular challenges setting it up, tuning it or whatever, I'll bring you in. Uh, so basically what you'll see is progress as we go. And there's a dog over there eating an egg. Absolutely loves him. Anyway, let's get to this thing. So here we are with the Yagi laid out on the ground. Um, so far so good. There goes plastic dog. Because I've looked at uh, you know, videos online of these already, uh, it's pretty obvious how to lay it out. Everything is colour coded, so that's really nice. Uh, obviously, we've got the, the centre pieces. Oh, well, there's, the, there's your boom. The two centre pieces with the, the coils uh, and then the traps on the outer elements. That's all pretty straightforward. I'm hoping that there is no right and wrong with these. I can't assume that there is. They should be identical. What you'll actually see is everything is colour coded, so... You've got a blue on the end of the boom. Uh, you've got blue on these here as well. Uh, that section is blue, blue there. If you go out, you've got the blue there as well. And if we go down to the other end, um, it's got like a brown. Uh, and you'll see that that's all the same. I am assuming that the brown goes to the inner section. Uh, that's a reasonable assumption, being that uh, that one over there was already pre-assembled in the box, uh, so I'm working off that, that it's got the uh, longer section on the inside. Uh, we will be able to tell that actually, 
Um, it's a single hole there, single hole there. Um, that hole there certainly looks a smaller diameter. Um, uh, so it looks like it's just going to actually screw into that. Um, hang on, go chase the dog off. Go. Take it. Piss off. Okay, so. Uh, so I am assuming that I'm going to have to get a small drill bit uh, and drill into that. Uh, which is interesting because you don't really want to do that until you've actually uh, tuned it and all that sort of stuff. But uh, anyway, we'll see how we go. I am going to face these with the drain holes downwards uh, so they don't fill up with water. Um, I have checked the elements. Uh, they all uh, don't move inside the, the traps there, so that's good. Uh, suggests it's all connected up. One thing that is suggested, uh, there is like a, a compound, actually the anti-corrosion compound. Um, so basically it says just to use a sandpaper just to rough up the ends of the smaller elements that go inside the larger elements and then just to uh, put this anti-corrosion compound on So we'll get around to that shortly. Uh, the one thing I wanted to have a look at uh, was the mounting bracket because I believe that this one actually fit on a 2 inch mast. Uh, so I have to have a look at that because I was going to go with a 2 inch. Uh, we'll check that out shortly. Uh, this, I believe, is for the actual uh, mounting the coax to the elements, um, rather than being a SO239, uh, it's actually it's going to be screwed into the element, so that's interesting. So whether I put a pigtail on and put the a plug on one end or just go straight to the element, I don't know. Uh, some end caps over here or there, I suppose stop to get it water getting in, keeping in mind that I don't have any instructions here. Uh, have to assume that those go over um, one of these U bolts is going to go through and obviously that just squares that up so it sits nice and flush and there's a couple of other the metal ones which are going to be used obviously for uh, mounting the antenna itself it goes like that so basically just one on the top uh, the U bolt holds onto that uh, and then tighten up. Now I've only got it, I've got it a little bit tight, but there's a little bit of wiggle still there. Um, I have heard that if you tighten this up too tight, it actually compresses uh, this part of the uh, aluminium boom. So uh, we won't be tightening those up too tight. We'll tighten them up just enough uh, to give rigidity, which is not too bad where it is, uh, but we won't tighten them up too tight. Holes there that probably use a little bit of work. I think going deburr, but that's not too bad. You know, we can still push through that. Those ones are clean. A few of the other ones, uh, or most of the other ones, all look pretty good. Um, okay, so we'll continue on with this and we'll come back to you shortly. I mean, worst comes to worst, you could always buy a bit of uh, thick wall uh, aluminium to put up, change the boom, whatever. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is, They're keeping the weight down. Some people have uh, braced it by putting something in the end here. Uh, just a short section uh, of something. There's extra strength there in the end when you're compressing that. Uh, with the uh, e-bomb.